Hey guys, uh, today I'm here with my friend slash boss, Jack Chen. Thank you for joining me today. I was waiting so long to interview him because you guys have been asking to do more interviews. He is, as I said, probably the smartest guy I ever talked to. And as you guys can see, I have a lot of questions ready for Mr. Chen. So bring it on. So we'll, we'll bring it on. Well, thanks for having me. and. Uh, I I disagree. First of all, I don't think I'm the smartest person. <laughs> well, he is. Like, he, he, like so, you, you guys will see why. You guys will see why. So, uh, sure, I'll give a brief introduction about myself. So, my name is Jack. I'm a fourth year graduating student at Ramen Commerce. I am a specialist in management. And in terms of where I'm going after graduation, in, which is in a, a month, I'm going to be studying at Harvard Law School uh, for my JD for three years. Jeez. He, he got accepted to Harvard, that's the first thing. And he's also the Rodman Commerce Student Association's president. He was a 2019 to 2020 president. So yes, uh, my friend Jack is a Harvard Law School student. He, he is also an RCSA president. My GPA is pretty decent. It's a pending 4.0. So pending. it's currently 3.99. 3 but um, I'm getting my final exam be marked for one of my courses and wish me luck. I'm pretty sure you maintained A or A plus throughout the whole like your university like <clears throat> up until like this last semester, right? Yeah. Which you got like that's where the three point nine nine comes from. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It's yeah. crazy to think about that he maintained A or A plus at University of Toronto because as I mentioned in my previous videos, I told you guys how hard it is, but this guy is the only guy who like broke that rule. Like he maintained four point oh up until the first semester of his fourth year, which is crazy. This is like a crazy, crazy accomplishment. Right, so as I mentioned, I grew up in Vancouver, so a lot of my friends were going to UBC or mainly Sodder School of Business. Why did I come to U of T? Well, I wanted a bit of a change of scenery. I feel like I've been in, in, in the West Coast for too long and I wanted to go to Toronto where like, from everything you read online, all the newspapers, Toronto is where it's happening in terms of Canada. That's the financial center of the country. So as a person who want, who's starting out their career, I wanted to start my education where everything is happening. And to me, that it was Toronto. That's the mm -hmm. first reason in terms of location. Um, secondly, I think University of Toronto is just, it has a international reputation. It does. I mean, more so than mm -hmm. UBC. And it's a large institution. You meet a ton of people. The people are very diverse. Mm -hmm. And there's just a lot of opportunities coming from a large university. For instance, there's 800 clubs. So to me, that pointed to 800 chances of becoming president of something. Right? And you did become a president. And, and I did. So, uh, yeah. But I, I, um, and I think in terms of choosing universities, it's, um, you know, a lot of people have a difficulty in choosing between a large university and a small university. I, I knew for myself, I definitely wanted a large university. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, I think being at this university, I mean, everything I have right now is kind of owed to the university, right? Right. All of my extracurricular experience, all of my summer internships, and then obviously getting into Harvard Law, I think came from what I did at this university. And I think if I went anywhere else, it's hard to say whether it would have turned out the same, right? Mm -hmm. I think some things might turn out the same, but like you never know with these kind of things and i think that the opportunities that i've been given at university of toronto and at rotman commerce specifically i think really was beyond anything i expected coming from high school mm -hmm. coming to high school i thought university you know this is going to be the big pond right i was going to be small fish in a big pond right and i was but there's just so many opportunities to become a big fish in the big pond too mm -hmm. right so i think that like what I was able to achieve in university, I really would not have expected to do so if I was in grade 12 right now. For all its reputation that it's a tough university, which is true, it does provide a lot in some other ways. And it's really, I think it's really up to you to find those opportunities. I think so. I think overall the impression is positive in terms of Toronto, in terms of Canada, U of T has a good reputation. You right. know? Um, and I think the, most of its programs have very good reputations. Um, there is also, th this is where kind of the large university also comes into play. Mm -hmm. um, 
and, and it works in in favor and against. So one thing right. is one thing that works in favor is you've got a really large alumni base mm -hmm. since thousands of people graduate every year. Chances are the person on the other side of the hiring table might be you. <laughs> right. 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 But then on the other hand, because there's so many students from U of T, you have to differentiate yourself from every other graduate. Right. That's a great point. So yeah. that's that's really important and. At U of T, the programs are really large. In Rotman Commerce, we graduate, I think, almost 600 students a year. That's a lot of people, and you have to differentiate yourself from those people as well. So I think that's where the challenge and the opportunity um, both happen at the same time. A filter. <laughs> a filter? Yeah, I think okay. it's a filter. I think it, it's like, um, see, if I had to put it in one word, it would be a filter, but um, basically, it's like you take a lot of smart people, very smart people, mm -hmm. very, who did very well in high school, who've already been filtered through that high school filter, right. and then you put them through an even finer filter. Oh, right? it's like okay. it's like you really, you really, U of T, and I think this is its specialty, is it really tries to find the best of the best. Okay, so the most difficult course I I've, I've taken or. The, would be a Raman elective. It was called. Um, it was actually a business law course, oh. and I think what made it really challenging was the way it was taught was actually very similar to the way how law school classes are taught. And I think you know, taking this in my second year, it was it was really a shock to see you know, wow, like this is how law school is going to be, and and and, um, and and it was really challenging, like memorizing a lot. And then being able to regurgitate that right. in a case setting on an exam. Um, so I thought that would be a very challenging course, and I, I did pretty badly on the midterm actually. But then I, um, from there, I spoke to a professor, and I went to office hours weekly, and I told the professor I want to go to law school. <laughs> and the professor is like, "Well, this is what it's going to be like in law school." So right. I said, "Okay, then I'm going to take this opportunity, and I'm going to get a head start on my law schools." Future classmates, right? I'm gonna learn. Right. I'm gonna learn how to do this. I'm gonna learn how to take exams in law school, and uh, so it was really challenging. I, I did end up doing decently on the course. At four point oh, yeah. <laughs> so I did my straight by, but um, it, that was challenging, and I think it was also very motivating and rewarding to be able to learn, you know, what what is studying gonna be like after graduating from here and going to law school. Well, shout out to that course for making Jack go into Harvard Law School. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you mind telling us what course that was? Like, yeah, like, sure. It was called RSM 225. RSM 225. Okay. Yeah. So stay away from that course. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> so number one, I'm going to preface this by saying you don't have to get a 4.0 GPA. You don't have to get a 3.99. And it depends on your goals. It depends on your... Your situation. It's. I'm not gonna say. I'll. I'll be very fair and I say it's not necessarily achievable to get a 4.0 mm -hmm. for everyone. Um, and not like not bearing. Like this has nothing to do with intelligence. It's just the situation that you're in, the goals that you have, the program that you in. Some are easier than others. Um, but from my experience, I'll give some general tips that I think have helped me out mm -hmm. in um in, in terms of getting the GPA that I have. And some of it actually starts from high school. Number one is AP credits. Um, mm -hmm. AP credits, if you have them, or IB credits, that's, you've got a huge advantage because you are now going to be taking a lighter course load than most of your classmates. And lighter course load means you have more time not to fool around, but more time <laughs> to spend on each of your courses, right? Right. So for me, I came in with 2.0 AP credits. So effectively, I only had to take uh, I, I, I took around four courses per semester out of the normal is five. Okay, so that means I took 20% less courses than everyone mm -hmm. else. So if I spent the same amount of time on each uh, as anyone else, then I should, my mark should reflect that, right? So, and I think it did. So the fact that I had AP credits, I also mm -hmm. took one summer of summer school, which is also a, another second tip. I think this is probably the first tip that is feasible for you guys if you're already in university or are graduating from high school um, is take summer school and take advantage of spreading things out. Mm -hmm. Don't try to do everything at once. I think um, taking a light course though, taking summer school, that is really critical in terms of uh, making it more manageable. To that end, probably the second most important thing to getting a 4.0 is course selection. Mm -hmm. How you choose your courses, 
when you put them in. Really looking at what are the courses I need to you know, fulfill my program and how am I gonna spread them out? Like, am I gonna put most of my hard courses in first year? Am I, or am I in second year? Am I gonna put most of my hard courses in my fourth year? In terms of planning your courses, don't be too of a go-getter and try to do all the hard courses at the beginning. Mm -hmm. It's just gonna burn you out and the result's not gonna be that great. Might as well put them at the end when you have three years of university experience right, right. and tackle the difficult ones. Right. So back in high school, I really wasn't part of any clubs. So when I came into university and I saw like what everyone else had on their resume, they were president of student council, they ran right. the yearbook, I fell a little behind. So um, I decided, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it up, you know. Right. I'm gonna join every single club I can join. So my first year, I ended up joining three clubs. Wow. Uh, one of which was the RCSA. I was really lucky, they took me in as an intern, which is a very competitive, which is a very competitive process. So clearly he got in as I well. Got, yeah. So we both- uh, He got me in. Made, made the <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, so I joined the RCSA and the mentorship I had there was probably the most important part of my first year. Um, so the current president at that time mentored me and we had a lot of discussions and really helped me believe that I could do what I wanted to do, right? I, mm -hmm. I'm a pretty shy person. Um, Not anymore, no. I, I still kind of am. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's like, um, but, but back then it was definitely a lot more like, I, I knew that my shyness held me back from a lot of what I wanted mm. to do. I knew I wanted to, I knew I had things, I had opinions about the school. There, I had opinions about how to improve student life. Right. Even back in high school, but I, I was just afraid to say it, right? So then being in the RCSA and having this president give me confidence that what, I, what my thoughts were were valid and people would appreciate them, that really changed my kind of mindset. Um, so from then on, I was really involved with the RCSA. I, every single year, I applied for a higher position mm -hmm. um, to take on more responsibilities and I ended up leading a team in my second year. Um, and then from there, it was kind of a, I would say it was kind of like, it was like a natural path. So it like flowed present. through it. Flowed yeah, through. exactly. It was very natural, I think. And I think uh, like if you do well, and if you're passionate about something, people recognize that and then mm -hmm. people will, will, will reward you for that. And I think that's why I was able to become president because, you know, I, I got along with people. Um, people respected what I did and I respected what they did. And I think we, we work well together. So, and then with those experiences, he got, what scholarship was it? Um, yeah, so I, I was recently awarded uh, something called the Futures Fund Scholarship, which mm -hmm. is a $10,000 scholarship for, uh, it's one per universe, one per business school in Canada. So he um, got the one of them in, yeah, in, in U of T, yes. Yeah, I got the U of T one, yeah. And I that, that's really, really about that. <laughs> really prestigious uh, award. And if you go on the Rothman Commerce portal, you'll be able to see yeah. This guy's uh, story and it his was, picture. Um, so. It was going to fund my grad trip, which is now canceled because of the coronavirus. Yeah.